So it turns out the Pentagon has been studying UFOs or what they call unidentified aerial phenomena for years, for decades. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow. Apparently, these things move at supersonic speeds, way faster than anything we can produce with today's technology. But I have some bad news for the UFO enthusiasts out there. Turns out most of them are just John Carlos Stanton line drives. If you had told me a couple of months ago that this Yankees team was going to rattle off 10 consecutive victories against pretty good teams, I would have said you were nuts. But they just got done beating up on the White Sox, the Red Sox, doesn't matter what color socks you got on, the Braves, the Twins. Last night they won their 10th consecutive game. They are on fire. They are clicking on all cylinders. The pitching has been really consistent day in and day out. Even Andrew Haney, and I'll get to him in a minute, pitched really well his last time out. He'll be going for the 11th consecutive victory tonight. We're seeing more line drives, less pop-ups. We're seeing guys steal bases. Judge stole another base last night. We're seeing guys who have been bench players or role players step up and do a great job. Velasquez has come up from the minor leagues. Tyler Wade has been playing all over the field. Rugnet Odor is playing out of position and doing a nice job, and if it weren't for him calling timeout the other day, he would have hit another home run. This Yankees team is stunning me right now. Absolutely stunning me. Now, you don't want to use it all up in August and get cold again in September or going into the playoffs, but you do want to make this run last as long as you can. You're just four games back of the Tampa Bay Rays. The Yankees do have a real shot. I think if they can get within maybe two games going into September, I think you got a real, real shot to overtake them before you even get to that final series in Tampa. But if not, you do have a chance to play Tampa Bay at the end of the year and to overtake them. And the way this team is playing with confidence and good fundamental baseball, great defense in the outfield, Joey Gallo, Aaron Judge, even John Carlos Stanton has looked pretty good out there. Infield is sharpening up. You've got Anthony Rizzo picking everything over there at first base. DJ is DJ. Velasquez has done a really great job filling in. And Glaber Torres, even though he's not an amazing shortstop, he's gotten the routine plays done this year at least. And then you got Gio Urshela coming back in a couple of days. I'm loving the way this team has looked. And then behind the dish, you got Gary Sanchez, who has improved this year defensively. He's still not, you know, a stud back there, but he's gotten better. So the team has played more fundamental baseball. We're not getting thrown out on the bases as much. That's a huge deal. We've got a mixture of righties and lefties. Kudos to Brian Cashman for going out and getting some of these guys. So I'm liking the way the Yankees are looking. And it also comes down to starting pitching. The starting pitching has been phenomenal for a while now. And we're really setting ourselves up to have a really nice rotation with less question marks in 2022. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with Corey Kluber. I don't know if he's going to be back, but let's take a quick look at the rotation of who we've got coming back next year. On yesterday's episode of Yankees Game Day, we talked a lot about Garrett Cole and how well he's pitched this season, so I don't want to spend too much time on him. He's clearly your ace. He's signed for another seven years beyond this one. He's shown no signs of slowing down, and he may very well win the Cy Young Award this year. He's back, and he's going to be your number one. Jordan Montgomery picked up his fifth win of the season last night. And look, there's some traditional stats that have been disregarded by modern fans, and wins are one of them. He's pitched way better than five wins in his 23 starts. He's got a 3.69 ERA and a 1.198 whip or walks and hits per innings pitched. Until last night, he had more than a strikeout per inning, and right now he's sitting at 8.9 Ks per nine. He's just 28 years old. He'll be back, and he should continue to improve with experience. And listen, just like the Yankees need left-handed bats, they also need left-handed starters. So Monty is perfect and I could see him being a big part of this rotation for another decade. Yankees should consider re-signing him to a team-friendly contract. Jamison Tyone is under team control for another season. He's impressed me this year as well. 
eight and four record, 3.94 ERA in 24 starts, 123 and one third innings, 121 strikeouts. He's got fantastic control as well, just 35 walks. He's gotten noticeably better as the season has gone along. He's mixing up his pitches more. He's got one of the best curveballs in the league, and his arm appears healthy since he's rebuilt his mechanics. It's a near certainty that he will be back next season as well. Domingo Herman was your number three starter this year. He is currently on the IL, but he's had an okay season. 4.45 ERA, recently had a setback with that shoulder injury. The Yankees have used him out of the bullpen a few times this year, and I honestly think he would be a lights-out reliever if that was his role for an entire season. And given some of the age in the Yankees' bullpen, that might be the way to go. Chapman is 34 next year. Britton is also 34. Litke will be 35. Chad Green will be 31. I think it makes sense to move Domingo into the bullpen and let him flourish and dominate as a relief pitcher. Nestor Cortez Jr. will be just 27 years old, and he's been a revelation for the Yankees this season. He's 2-1 in 15 games, seven of which were starts. He's thrown 56 in the third innings and has 60 strikeouts and just 16 walks. His ERA is 2.56, and his whip is an impressive 1.065. I think he comes into spring training as the favorite for the number three or number four man in the rotation. And as for your number five spot, I think you have to go with Luis, the real deal heel at this point. He hasn't allowed a run, and he's shown a ton of energy out there. Good fastball, crisp slider, a lot of moxie, a lot of confidence. He's going to be a stud. That leaves you with some other options in the bullpen. Luis Severino has not been able to stay healthy. I don't think you can count on him to be a starter and throw you 200 innings. I think his days as a starting pitcher may be over due to health reasons. I think he would fit well in the bullpen. Clark Schmidt is still a big prospect, but we haven't seen him yet this year in the bigs. Davey Garcia has fallen off some, so I don't know if you can count on him. But you've still got Luis Medina lurking in the minor leagues. I'll get to him in the farm report in just a minute. Corey Kluber is a free agent, and given his health concerns, I don't see them bringing him back no matter how he finishes the season. But the way I look at it, you've got five really good starters locked in, and you've got a few more in Herman Severino and Clark Schmidt, maybe even Mike King, as depth pieces that can step in. The rotation should be in really good shape next year. Andrew Haney will be on the mound tonight, making his fifth start as a member of the Yankees. He is 8-8 eight and eight on the season with a 5.51 ERA in 22 starts, 116 innings, 135 strikeouts, 1.28 walks and hits per innings pitch. So he is a good strikeout pitcher, but he sometimes has trouble with giving up the home run. He's given up home runs in each of his starts with the Yankees. His first outing, he kind of got pummeled. Second outing out, he got hit hard early, but stayed in the game. Ended up giving the Yankees a quality outing. Third start was the cornfield start, and that was a mess. And then last time out against the Red Sox, he actually pitched pretty well. Went seven innings, gave up just one run. Let's hope that he can channel whatever he used that game tonight against the Braves because the Yankees want to keep this streak going. All right, let's take a quick look at how some of our guys are doing on the farm. The Yankees' new number one prospect is Anthony Volpe. He's batting 304 on the season, 20 home runs, 71 ribbies, 28 stolen bases. If you have 20-20 in a season, you're doing really well. OPS over 1,000. He's really turned up the attention that he's getting because he's played so well. I think he could realistically be in the big leagues you know, maybe by the end of next season, if he continues to accelerate, there's no reason to keep him down there if he's dominating. Jason Dominguez seems to have come back down to earth. He's batting 238 with two home runs and 12 RBIs. Got up to a really hot start, but he's really not been playing that well as of late. He's striking out way too much. Hopefully just growing pains, and he will adjust as he continues to face more pitchers at the professional level. And Luis Medina continues to strike out hitters at an excellent rate too many walks 96 strikeouts 47 walks in 78 and a third innings five and four record he is currently pitching for the double a somerset patriots 
That's it for me. I will be back with the lineup and starting pitcher before the game sometime probably around 5 o'clock and then the post-game show after tonight's game. I'll see you then. Special shout-out to the Patreon supporters and anyone else who has supported this channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it the old thumbs up and subscribe for more Yankees content year-round. If you really enjoyed it, check out The Freeze. It's the official podcast of this channel. Or pick up some swag from the Teespring store. Link in the description. Thanks for watching.